welcome to this lecture number 9 which is uh, in which we will continue with our previous class uh, previous lecture as well that is on uh, heterogeneity uh, we will uh, take a numerical problem in this heterogeneity and anisotropy anisotropy in aquifers and uh, let us consider say for example, a stratified aquifer a numerical problem of a stratified aquifer of uh, say thickness 12 meters. So, this total thickness is say 12 meters and it consists of 3 layers as shown here. And uh, this is the flow direction, the flow is along the layers or uh, stratifications or strata and uh, the bottom layer has say this is the bottom layer, it has a k value of uh, 30 meter per day and it has a thickness of say 5 meters. And the middle layer it has middle and top layers have permeability of uh, say 20 meter per day. This top layer also has a permeability of 20 meter per day. No, I am sorry, top has a, let us consider take it as say 45 meter per day. and are of equal thickness. So, obviously, here if we direct this 5 meter thickness of the bottom layer from the total thickness of 12 meter. So, we are left with 7 meters and that 7 meters is equally distributed uh, between the top layer and the bottom layer, top layer and the middle layer. So, that is 3.5 meter is the middle layer and so is the thickness of top layer which is 3.5 liter, 3.5 meter. Uh, so, the now we know the and the flow is along the stratifications or layers or strata and uh, for this let us uh, say find out what will be the equivalent permeability as well as what will be the transmissivity. So, now let us come to the equivalent permeability. So, K e in this case is uh, given by summation K i B i from 1 to n divided by summation B i. So, in this case we have to sum there are 3 layers. So, there will be 3 terms in the numerator. So, that is uh, 45 into 3.5 plus 20 into 3.5 plus 30 into 5. So, this is in the numerator and in the denominator the total thickness which is say 12 meters. So, this will be the equivalent permeability and in this case. So, this equivalent permeability K e will be simply that is uh, that is 45 65 into 3.5. So, that is uh, 
yeah, here I am uh, computing here. So, this is 65 into 3 into 3.5 plus 150, which is 377.5 divided by 12. which is 31.46 meter per day. So, this is the equivalent permeability. And let us also determine the estimate the transmissivity, transmissivity or it is also known as transmissibility. So, this is simply equal to K e into sigma b i or which is simply equal to this is a summation 1 to n k i into b i. So, this is as will be the numerator of the this one. So, this is 377.5 meter square per day. So, this is the value of transmissibility. So, here I was mentioning here. So, there were three layers, the top layer and middle layer having 3.5 meter thickness each and bottom layer having 5 meter thickness each with uh, the hydraulic conductivity or coefficient of permeability of 45 meter per day, 20 meter per day and 30 meter per day respectively. So, in this case and the flow is along the stratifications. So, in this case it is uh, simple we just apply the, uh, the formula and uh, get the equivalent permeability which is a 31.46 meter per day and the uh, transmissivity for this entire aquifer consisting of 3 strata is 377.5 meter square per day. So, this is just uh, an illustration of one uh, simple numerical example consisting of uh, an, an anisotropic aquifer, confined aquifer with uh, three layers or uh, three uh, stratifications and flow along the sun. So, now let us come to the ground water flow rates and flow directions. Of course, uh, so this ground water we have we have been abbrevi abbreviating as uh, G W. So, we know that with by Darcy's expression the ground water flow velocity is given by the hydraulic conductivity k into i and uh, here and the the ground water flow rate obviously is given by the velocity into the area flow which is k into i into a so accordingly the we can if we can estimate all these three parameters the hydraulic conductivity k the hydraulic gradient i and the area of uh, uh, cross sectional area of flow for the ground water so if we estimate each of these parameters then the product of these three estimated parameters will give us the estimated uh, ground water flow rate now, let us consider say for example, a, a stream or a river which is flowing above an alluvium something like this and uh, here let us say this is the the water table 
and uh, this is the stream. Let us say this, uh, so this is the alluvium. is essentially an aquifer and say let us say the width of this alluvium is something of the order of uh, say 1000 meters and the average depth of this alluvium. So, this is the average width and the average depth say that is uh, say of the order of say something like say 50 meters. Then in that case our cross sectional area A will be 1000 into 50 which is 50,000 meter square and if we multiply this by the ground water flow velocity given by the Darcy's law which is k into i and suppose the hydraulic gradient is uh, say the hydraulic gradient is say 10 meters or say maybe 5 meters say let us take this to be 8 meter in 1000 meter length. So, this will be 8 divided by 1000 which is 0 0.008 and obviously that is the hydraulic gradient and then the, the coefficient of permeability if we take this as uh, say something like say 100 meter per day then in that case simply these are the estimations permeability or hydraulic conductivity is estimated as 100 meter per day and the hydraulic gradient is estimated as 0 0.008 in the area again this is also an estimation only that is why I am using this approximately equal to sign because this is based on average width and then average depth. So, in that case, so now we can write down this Q is equal to 100 into 0 0.008 into 50,000. So, this will be 50,000 into 0 0.8. So, this is of the order of say 40,000 meter cube per day. So, this is our estimated value of uh, ground water flow. This is just to give an idea. So, basically here we need to estimate each of the three parameters. The first one is this uh, the area of cross section of flow area of flow cross section for the ground water, the second one is the hydraulic uh, conductivity k and the third one is the hydraulic uh, gradient i. So, these estimates should be as realistic as possible and based on that once uh, we estimate each of these three parameters then simply take the product of this. So, that will give us the estimation. So, that is why let me use the approximate uh, equal to sign here. So, this alluvium uh, with uh, say these dimensions average depth of 50 meters and average width of 1000 meters which is uh, essentially the aquifer below the stream. So, will yield a ground water of uh, approximately 40,000 meter cube per day when the estimated uh, uh, hydraulic conductivity is 100 meter per day through this uh, the material of this aquifer or alluvium 
constituting this aquifer are olybium as well as the hydraulic gradient which is estimated as 8 meter in 1000 meters length along the flow. So, this is just on to give one idea of uh, uh, is estimating the, the ground water flow rates. Now, let us come to this uh, ground water flow directions. So, here So, we need to go by what is known as the flow net, which is essentially a network consisting of two sets of orthogonal lines, the streamlines shown by the green color uh, one and the equipotential lines. Let me show them by so, these are the equipotential lines. And uh, these are the streamlines or the flow lines. Also known as flow lines. Now, let us consider the stream wise, let us uh, partition this flow net into square grids and uh, so, let us say the total flow between two neighboring streamlines, this be d q and here also this is uh, the flow is d q between the bottom and the middle streamline as well as the middle and the top streamline. And uh, let us uh, write down the head values or the total uh, hydraulic head values along each of the equipotential line. So, let this be h here and obviously, due to uh, friction and other losses there will be a continuous head loss. So, for the neck along the next equipotential line let the head be h minus d h and in this case it can be h minus 2 d h. Okay. So, now and also let us consider this stream wise length as d s and let us consider the length that is the d s is the distance between two adjacent uh, equipotential lines which is by along the stream wise that is why it is denoted by d s and uh, this the perpendicular or the meridional. So, which is which represents the distance between two neighboring streamlines let this be d m. Okay. So, now we know that by the definition of this hydraulic gradient so, this is d h by d s basically the change in the head per unit uh, uh, displacement along the streamlines. So, therefore, here if we consider unit width perpendicular to the paper. So, therefore, this total discharge q 
is simply given by the hydraulic conductivity k into the hydraulic gradient d h by d s. So, this is the uh, velocity multiplied by the area. So, this is simply given by 1 into d m. So, this is the area. Okay. So, therefore, this uh, the ground water flow rate and here because uh, since the grid is almost a square grid so we can say this ds is approximately equal to dm that is a stream wise distance is approximately equal to the perpendicular distance along the flow net so therefore we can write down the expression for q is k into dh and suppose this dh the total head h which is there in the up, along the upstream most equipotential line if this is and uh, along the downstream most point if the head be 0 it is uh, the entire head is uh, lost due to friction and other losses in uh, say n uh, along n such uh, equipotential lines. So, in that case so this d h can be approximated as h by n where n is the number of uh, segments of equipotential lines. Therefore, q which is the flow per unit width this is a flow rate per unit width is given by k into h by n and the total flow rate for this we have to if the flow is divided into m channels m channels m number of channels in the stream wise direction by streamlines then total flow so that is q is equal to m into small q which is simply equal to m into k h by n. So, this is the expression for the total flow rate. So, here m is the number of channels along the stream wise direction and uh, k is the hydraulic conductivity, h is the total head in the upstream most along the upstream most equipotential line, n is the number of segments in the along the off equipotential line. So, in that case the total flow is simply given by this m k into h divided by n. So, this is how we can estimate the total flow and also we can uh, estimate say using the the uh, the direction so we can estimate the 
the ground water flow direction also. So, like this we can uh, estimate the flow rate as well as as well as the flow direction. Now, let us consider an anisotropic case wherein say consider an anisotropic aquifer. So, here which is which has a uh, in the x z plane with uh, hydraulic conductivities k x and k z along x and uh, z directions and uh, typically in case of the alluvium or uh, aquifers. So, this k x will be greater than uh, k z. So, the equivalent hydraulic conductivity So, this is k e is can be approximated as the square root of the product that is k x k z and uh, say in such case because of this anisotropy which results in different uh, values of the parameters the ground water flow parameters such as uh, hydraulic conductivity and other parameters like transmissivity and so on. There is aquifer uh, thickness and so the either the geometric parameters or uh, kinematic parameters. So, what happens is we need to estimate the, the flow rate through such uh, this one uh, such anisotropic aquifers by assuming by estimating the equivalent hydraulic conductivity. And in such case, the uh, uh, the flow lines, that is the uh, the streamlines, will not be fully perpendicular to the equipotential lines because of anisotropy. And in such case, if we uh, transform this into an isotropic condition, equivalent isotropic condition, in that case only the flow lines will be perpendicular to equipotential lines. So, here let us say the flow net analysis of a, for an earth dam let us consider say for example, this is the and in this case suppose these are the flow lines and the equipotential lines because of anisotropy they will not be intersecting orthogonally and uh, in this case so if this is the total length l so here let me write this is the this is a true an isotropic section with uh, say k x is equal to 9 k z.
So, this is the downstream uh, one and this is the x z plane, this is the x direction and then this is the z direction. So, this is figure A which represents the true anisotropic section with uh, say k x approximately equal to 9 times k z. Then, so this can be transformed into an equivalent transformed isotropic section. For transforming this into So, this is B is the transformed isotropic section. So, in this case, so this length the length L will be, so this is uh, L dash. So, this L dash will be equal to L into under square root k z by k x. In this case, this will be L into under square root k z by 9 k z. So, this L dash is simply equal to L by 3. So, this L dash is L by 3 and in such case for this transformed uh, isotropic section. In this case, So, this distance will be m, whereas in this case, this distance of a grid, so that will be 3 m. So, so, it is only in case of this, because of this anisotropy, the streamlines as well as equipotential lines, they will not be perpendicular to each other, they will have some uh, this one and uh, only in case of a transformed isotropic section. So, it will have a transformed length which is given by that is uh, uh, L dash is will be equal to L, in L by 3 in this case. And similarly, in this case since uh, suppose we are uh, since we are taking this k x is approximately equal to 9 times k z. So, therefore, here we can say this uh, k e is approximately equal to 9 k z into k z, which is uh, 9 k z square under square root. So, this is 3 k z. So, this is the equivalent is equal to k e. So, therefore, so for this anisotropic aquifer with uh, varying hydraulic conductivity values along x and z directions. So, the equivalent hydraulic conductivity is given by 3 times the uh, hydraulic conductivity along z direction and the uh, base width of the, uh, the transformed isotropic section uh, through which the flow ground water flow takes place will be given by L by 3 and uh, so this is corresponding to the expression this uh, L dash is equal to L into under square root k z by k x. So, like this the and say let us consider another case wherein there is a, a weir or a barrage with say some kind of a upstream head and 
Of course, we are on a barrage, so let us consider this uh, to be almost impervious. And in this case, say suppose let us consider the this as the channel. And uh, in this case, what happens is the channel is pervious, whereas this is uh, impervious uh, dike or uh, barrage or weir. So, in this case, the streamlines will be and let us consider this also to be the so this is the impervious sheet pile So, in such a case, the streamlines will take the shape if the downstream water level So, in this case the streamlines will will be having streamlines of the flow lines So, these are the flow lines and we can uh, construct the, so if this is the head difference between the upstream and downstream. So, if we uh, divide this head difference into, so in this case there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 uh, streamlines are there and if we divide this into say 7 it is a no, let us uh, I am sorry that is a this is not the downstream this one. So, this is the downstream water level and if we uh, so this difference between the upstream water level and the downstream water level if we divide this into 7 uh, divisions. So, here we get our uh, So, this will be the downstream most equipotential line, then followed by the next equipotential line will be like this, the third equipotential line like this and the fourth equipotential line and the fifth equipotential line. the next equipotential line so so to const to get the to know the the flow direction at any particular location we need to use the concept of flow net and we need to construct the flow net so therefore 
the streamline or the flow line at any particular location will give the the ground water flow direction at that particular uh, location okay and uh, so this is regarding the now let us consider let us go to the general flow equations through porous media So, here, say so let us consider a two dimensional flow initially and again later on let us extend it into a three dimensional uh, flow domain. So, in this case this is the the flow domain two dimensional flow domain and then say so these are the streamlines shown by this green color and uh, let considering the unit width let the flow across uh, the this boundary of the square uh, flow domain be q x i. So, i standing for uh, inlet input inlet section and similarly, the the flow here per unit width let this be q x comma o and then similarly, along the the bottom uh, boundary so, let the flow be q y comma i and then so this is the, the inlet and then so here let this be q y comma o and let the, the dimensions let uh, since we are considering this to be a square grid. So, let us assume the dimensions of each side of this flow domain as uh, w. Okay. And in this case, we know that the Darcy's expression holds good that is the ground water flow velocity is given by minus k into d the partial derivative of h with respect to s. This h is the head and s represents the displacement along the flow line or streamline. Now, let us consider let this uh, for this uh, flow domain let T x comma T y be the transmissivities. in x and uh, x and y direction okay so therefore this qxi we can write this as qxi can be written as minus T x which is the transmissivity or transmissibility in the x direction into the width of the flow, uh, flow domain that is w and we are considering unit uh, 
uh, thickness. So, the area will be w into 1 into d h by d x in the i direction. Similarly, q x the flow the outflow through the right boundary which is denoted by q x o is given by minus t x which is transmissivity along x direction into w into d h by d x at this outlet section. Okay. Now, let us take down the, the change in the flow rate change in flow rate along x direction and y direction. So, similarly here we can also write down the expressions for uh, q y i and q y o. Let me write here. So, this is q y i can be written as minus t y into w into d h by d y i and so q y o is equal to minus t y w d h by d y o. So, therefore, the total the total change in flow rate along x and uh, x direction and y direction. So, this is uh, basically this is essentially that is the flow rate. So, this is simply given by q x i minus q x o. So, this is the change in the flow rate along x direction plus q y i minus q y o and this must be equal to this can be expressed in terms of the storage coefficient s multiplied by the area in this case this will be w square this will be the cross sectional uh, this one and multiplied by the rate of change of h with time the partial derivative of h with time. So, therefore, so we can write down the minus T x into d h by d x i minus d h by d x o let us divide the whole thing this is T x into w minus T y into w d h by d y i minus d h by d y o this must be equal to minus s into w square into d h by d t. Okay.
so we can write down we can simplify this as uh, tx into dh by dx i minus dh by dx o divided by w minus ty into dh by dy i minus dh by dy o divided by w. So, this is equal to minus s into dh by dt. So, here in this uh, when the when this w is extremely small or infinitesimally small in this case. So, this the the term under the square bracket under the square brackets can be approximated as the second uh, partial derivative of h uh, with respect to x and second partial derivative of h with respect to y. So, therefore, so the the terms in the square bracket can be approximated as as a second partial derivatives of h with respect to x and y. So, therefore, suppose if we call this as equation 1. So, this equation 1 becomes T x into d square h by d x square plus T y into d square h by d y square. This is equal to the storativity s into d h by d t. Okay. And this T x and T y, so we can, can be simplified as uh, k x into w k x into say b which is the b x you can say b into d square h by d x square plus uh, this t y can be substituted as k y into b where b is a saturated aquifer thickness into d square h by d y square this is equal to s into d h by d t. Or the same uh, this so therefore, if this is equation 2 and then uh, this is equation this is equation 2 and then this is equation 3 so equation 2 can be simplified as d square h by dx square plus 
d square h by d y square which is equal to s by t into d h by d t. So, this equation 2 here this is for a for an isotropic aquifer. So, in this case this is t is equal to say t x is equal to t y. Okay. So, this is the basic uh, ground water flow equation in the two dimensions and of course, if you add the third dimension also. So, in that case, so this is the basic 2 D ground water flow equation. So, in the next uh, lecture, we will discuss, we will extend this, uh, this two dimensional ground water flow equation to three dimensional one and also we will see the its uh, variation in the, when the flow is steady and this one. Thank you.